workshop. Not in the workshop today, we're in the laundry room. Uh, the dryer the other day, we got a Whirlpool dryer um, stopped heating the clothes. So the clothes aren't getting dry. They're tumbling, but there's no hot air going in. I already did some troubleshooting and made sure there wasn't any obstructions in the dryer duct um, or the the lint trap or anything like that. So if you're in the Wichita area, uh, go down to Herb Snow and Sons. They've been around for years. They're great people down there to work with. Um, they didn't have the parts in stock, but they got them in in just a couple days for me. So we got in the big brown box there, we got a brand new heating element. And these switches you see, there's a thermal cutoff switch. So it's one of those deals where you can troubleshoot it and you can ohms check it. Um, but it's sort of deal that while you're in there, you might as well replace both of them. So um, I'm not going to go through the process of ohms checking the heating element or the cutout switch. We're just going to show you how to replace them. So first things first, uh, dryers run on 220. So you want to make sure that that doesn't bite you. You guys know how I feel about electricity. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and disconnect power and pull the dryer out and get back there and get the back panel off. All right. Pro tip number 12, make sure that whenever you stand up in the laundry room behind the uh, washer and dryer that you don't hit your head on the corner of the cabinet because that smarts. Okay, first of all, got the back panel here. Um, we're just going to slip the dryer vent off. I already loosened that up. And then you just got these machine screws around the edge. So we're going to go ahead and take those off. I think there's uh, five or six of them. Make sure you don't lose those screws. All right, so this is an older dryer. So it's not gonna have all of the super fancy bells and whistles, but it, it does have some, it's really gross. It does have some of the uh, sensors for like sensing how much moistures in the clothes and stuff like that. So this is the panel right here where your uh, where your heater element is. And this just got like a screw down here and you'll pull that thing out from the bottom. Here's your cutout switch. There's a high and a low. And uh, we'll go ahead and replace those now. If you don't have one of these ratcheting wrenches, a regular 5 16th wrench will do. It's kind of in an awkward position, but you can get to it. Yep, as you can see right there is the culprit. That heating element broke. Just thermal cycle after thermal cycle and these wires fatigue and uh, they end up breaking. So we'll get the new one shoved up in there and uh, here we go.
All right, so now we're gonna replace our thermal switches. And I suppose you could get these mixed up, but it'd be pretty difficult to. So I'm gonna do the top one first. So the top one's pretty simple. It's just these two connectors. and a quarter inch sheet metal screw. And then the other part just has that tab and then just sticks in the other hole. So we'll go back with the identical one. And that one first. We'll get our sheet metal screw started. Remember, you don't have to smoke these, just sheet metal screws. And then repeat on the bottom one. All right, so here's where we replace the bottom terminal too. So it's not really difficult. You just undo this sheet metal screw and pop the old one out, put the new one in, put the terminals back on, and you're good to go. And then you've got two fresh new limit switches there. They say that while you're in here replacing the element to replace those switches too. All right, so obviously you can see that this wire that's closest to us got really hot at some point. Uh, we're going to cut that back to some fresh wire and probably use the same terminal because this is kind of a specialty terminal. Um, but we're going to solder this terminal back to some fresh wire. And that way we don't have to worry about this insulation that's been compromised or the wire being compromised and getting weak in there. It's obviously kind of a blackish color instead of a copper color. So we'll do that now. All right, guys, so that pretty much wraps it up. We soldered the old connector back on. We were able to salvage it and uh, got a good tight fit now uh, back to some good healthy wire. And uh, we're going to go ahead and button this thing up and ops check it. And we'll see you in a minute. All right, so let's go ahead and ops check this. All right, so now we got some nice hot air coming out of there. Dryer seems to be working really well. As always, thanks for joining us in Germ's Workshop. If this video was helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, remember, 10 in, 10 out.